Hello, I'm Mr. Bob, and welcome to my Algebra 1 video series. This video covers Chapter 1, Section 2, titled Exponents and Order of Operations. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed methods for simplifying and evaluating expressions and formulas. You will additionally review simplifying and evaluating expressions with grouping symbols. You will review the simplification of numerical expressions with and without grouping symbols and evaluate expressions with exponents. Finally, you will review a real-world problem. If you would like me to cover any of these topics in greater details, please leave your request in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel if you'd like if you'd find this video to be helpful. Thank you. Okay, before we get started, let's look at a few definitions. Um, to simplify. A numerical expression, you replace it with the simplest name. The simplest name for 2 times 8 plus 2 times 3, and for 2 times the quantity 8 plus 3, is 22. So if you look at it, you'll see 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 times 3 is 6. 16 and 6 is 22. So they're saying that this 22 right here is the name we're going to call that as the simplest name okay and then they're talking about an exponent an exponent tells you how many times a number and the number we call the base so how many times a number is used as a factor so if i said two to the fourth two is the base and four is the exponent so what this is saying is how many times the number the base is used as a factor it's saying that two is used four times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, that's what this is telling us here. And the power has two parts. This entire thing, in this case, 2 to the 4th, is a power. Okay, and a power has two parts. Its base and its exponent. Okay, we'll see this again in the next slide. Okay, objective 1A, we're calling this, simplifying and evaluating expressions and formulas. So again, we're going to read these same things. To simplify a numerical expression, you replace it with its simplest name. The simplest name for 2 times 8 plus 2 times 3, and for 2 times 8 plus 3 is 22. Both of those are the same value. The expressions may include exponents. Using an exponent provides a shorthand way to show a product of equal factors. We're showing it right here. I just drew this picture for you basically on the previous slide, but here it is, 2 to the 4th. The whole thing is this power. 2 to the 4th is the power. The base is the 2, and the exponent's the 4. And this is telling us that we're going to take the number 2 and multiply it times itself four times. 2 taken 4 times. So the exponent tells you how many times a number, the base, is used as a factor. A power has two parts. Its base, here's the base, we talked about the base, the 2, and the exponent is its other factor. Okay? You read the expression 2 to the 4th here as 2 to the 4th power. To simplify 2 to the 4th, you replace it with the simplest name, 16. 2 to the 4th power is 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. There are special names for 2 cubed, 2 to the 3rd power, which is 2 cubed, and 2 to the 2nd power, which is 2 squared. And this says, look at the expression on the next slide. It is simplified in two ways. So on the last slide, they asked us to look at this next slide here, what we're looking at. And it says that we're going to show us a couple expressions, the same expression, but we're going to solve it in two different ways. So let's, what it looks like. So the expression is 3 plus 5 minus 6 divided by 2. 3 plus 5, right here, 3 plus 5 minus 6 divided by 2. In the first case, we're going to go through it. We're going to add the 3 plus the 5, and then we're going to subtract. 6 divided by 2, right? See, so 3, 3 plus 5, here's the 8. And then we're going to go down and we're going to say 8 minus 6 is 2. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. And this is wrong. 
because of what you're going to see here shortly, but it's because of a standard that we've de we've decided how to process these. But if you look at it in the other direction, it's 3 plus 5 minus 6 divided by 2. In this one, we're going to add the 3 plus the 5. Okay, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be subtracting. We did we did the 6 divided by 2 first. So we have 3 plus 5. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to delete this line here. Let me, let me erase that line so it doesn't confuse anybody. That line's gone. Okay, so here we've got 3 plus 5 on the first line minus 6 divided by 2. We did the division first. We did the division bef before the addition or subtraction. So then we had a 3 here on this line. So now we say, now we can do addition from left to right. So 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. And the correct answer for this is the 5. But you've got different results depending on how you combine these numbers and, and process them. So we have a rule for that now. And I, I they don't mention it in this section, this chapter. But it's PEMDAS, right? It's P E M D A S. And that stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And we do things in that order. And that wasn't a very good set of colors to use. So PEM, oh, I didn't change the color here. I'll write it again. P-E-M-D-A-S. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So just kind of think about that PEMDAS and remember that. Okay, so now it says to avoid having two different results when simplifying the same expression. That's what we just talked about, two different results. Mathematicians have agreed on an order for doing operations. And that's what I've just outlined here. It's just PEMDAS. Parentheses are grouping symbols. Exponents, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, in that order. Okay, so in summary, the order of operations, right here, the order of operations. Where is my pencil? There it is. Order of operations. First, perform any operation or operations inside the grouping symbols. That's the PEM, PEM part, the P part of the PEMDAS. Then simplify all powers, then do the powers. Parentheses or grouping symbols then exponents, then multiply and divide in order from left to right. They want you to do it from left to right. Okay, and you'll see this as we go forward. And then finally, it's add and subtract in order from left to right. And it doesn't matter whether it's divide or multiply or add or subtract that comes first, but they just want them from left to right. Okay. Okay, example one, simplifying a numerical expression. So our numerical expression that we're going to simplify is 25 minus 8 times 2 plus 3 squared. That's 3 to, 3 to the second power, 3 squared. So I rewrote it, 25 minus 8 times 2 plus 3 squared. And then I duplicated it from one side. So here it was on this side. And I moved it over on this side so I can manipulate it. So what did I do? The first thing I did is I put these parentheses on here. You don't have to do that. I did it so I can show you that you see this is subtraction, 25 and the 8. That would be 8 subtracted from 25, but we can't do that. We have to do the multiplication before addition and subtraction. We have to do powers before we do multiplication, division, or addition and subtraction. So I put parentheses on that too, just so that you can see. So 3 squared is 9. I left the parentheses. 3 squared is 9. And 8 times 2 is 16. So now the new equation is 25 minus 16 plus 9. Well, the next step I did is I took off the parentheses because they're no longer needed. There's nothing more to do inside the grouping symbols, but you have the number. You can't go any farther. So I said 25 minus 16 plus 9. Well, now we have just addition and subtraction. So what did the PEMDAS say? It said do addition and subtraction from left to right. So 25 minus 16 is 9, and then plus 9. And 9 plus 9 is 18. Okay? 
Okay, example one, check your understanding. Uh, I'm sure you know that this means that I'd like you to stop the slide or stop the video and try these on your own. And then when you come back, we'll continue on. So I'll read these to you before you leave. Problem A is 6 minus 10 divided by 5. B is 3 times 6 minus 4 squared divided by 2. And then 4 times 7 plus 4 divided by 2 squared. And D is 5 cubed plus 90 divided by 10. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and stop the video and try these. And when you come back, we'll do them together. Okay, I'm assuming you've had enough time to do that. So let's try. Let's see what we come up with. So the first thing we're going to look at, we know the PEMDAS, right? I'm going to write it right up here. P E M D A S. Parentheses, exponent, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So in this particular one, we see that there's subtraction and division. So that means we have to do the division before we do the subtraction. So that means we have 6 minus 10 divided by 5 is 2. And now we have nothing but subtraction left. And then that equals, equals, oops, <laughs> I'm going backwards. Excuse me. Let me, see. Oop, let me erase that. Come on. Let's erase it. There we go. 6 minus 2. Let's try again, Bob. And here we go. 6 minus 2 is 4. Let's go over here to B. So we have multiplication, 3 times 6, minus 4 squared divided by 2. So according to PEMDAS, the first thing we have to do, well, there's no grouping symbols, so we have an exponent. So I'm going to write it, 3 times 6 minus 4 to the 4 squared is 4 times 4 is what? 16 divided by 2. Okay, so now we have that taken care of. Okay, so now we go, we have multiplication, 3 times 6 minus 16 divided by 2. Well, these are both the same, but they have to be done, this as subtraction has to be pretty much the last thing we're going to do. So we're going to combine these two, and then we have a negative sign, and we're going to combine these two by doing the operation. So this is 18 minus 16 divided by 2 is 8. All right? And then finally, we're going to do the subtraction. 18 minus 8 is, oop, not 8. I'm having a lot of fun, aren't I? Doing the, putting the wrong numbers down. Um, is 18 minus 8 is 10. Let's go to C. 4 times 7 plus 4 divided by 2 squared. Well, this is multiplication, so these could go together. And then this is addition, so that's kind of at the end. Now we have 4 divided by 2 squared. So we have to do this first before we do this. So let's look at that. I can do this right now because there's an addition here. I can do it's not going to hurt when I do this. There's nothing going on inside here. So I could say 4 times 7 is 28 and plus. And now I got to do the 4, this 2 squared. So it's going to be 4 divided by 4. Okay, so now I do these. Got to do that before I do the addition. So now it's going to be 28 plus 4 divided by 4, 1. So what is 28 plus 1? 29. Now let's go to D. We have an exponent. So that's going to come before the addition or the division. The division is going to come before the addition. But this exponent is going to come, certainly going to come first of all. So this is 5 cubed is 125. Okay. Plus 90 divided by 10. We're going to do the division before we do the addition. So 90 divided by 10 is plus 9, right? So 125 plus 9 is 134, okay? Okay, example two, evaluating an algebraic expression. You evaluate an algebraic expression by substituting a given number for each variable. 
then simplify the numerical expression using the order of operations. So let's give it a shot. So we have, let's evaluate 3a, 3 times a, minus 2 cubed, divided by b. And 4, it says 4a equals 7 and b equals 4. So what, first thing you're going to do is you're going to write the equation down, and you're going to substitute everywhere there's an a, you're going to substitute in a 7. And everywhere there's a b, you're going to substitute a 4. So here's the equation. I, I duplicated it, and I replaced the a with a 7, 3 times 7, minus 2 cubed, okay, and divided by b was a 4, divided by 4, okay? So I've done that that far. So we've gotten the replacements completed. Then 3 times 7 minus 8, 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. I did the exponent before I did anything else. So now I have 8, the exponent. I can say 3 times 7. I haven't done anything here yet. Minus 8 divided by 4. Well, I have to do the the I have to do the multiplication and division before we do the subtraction. So the next thing I do is 3 times 7 is 21. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now we can do the subtraction. And the subtraction says 21 minus 2 is 19. Okay, example two, check your understanding. Uh, if you've been working with me now for a while, I, I'm going to hope that you'll stop the video and work these on your own and then come back and we'll do them together. I'll read them to you first. Evaluate each expression for c equal to 2 and d equal to 5. The first problem is 4c minus 2d divided by c. The second problem is d plus 6c divided by 4. And this fourth, third problem is 4 to the 4, uh, excuse me, 2, <laughs> excuse me, c to the 4th power minus d times 2. And then d is 40 minus d times 2, or not d times 2, d squared, plus c times d times 3. So why don't you go ahead and stop it and... When you come back, we'll do them together. Okay, I'm assuming you've stopped it and you're ready to go move forward, so let's try it. C is 2, D is 5. So our first thing we're going to do is we're going to write this down is 4 times 2 minus 2 times 5 divided by 2. Okay, so that is what? So this subtraction says this multiplication can be done before the subtraction. There's nothing else over here, so I can do, I can say 8 minus. So now I have 2 times 5, and this divided by 2. So they want us in PEMDAS, if you remember that, PEMDAS, uh, right here, P, E, M, D, A, S. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. They want us to go left to right. Well, we go left to right starting here because this is where all the multiplying and dividing is. So left to right says 2 times 5 is 10, and then divided by 2. So we'll write it again. 8 minus 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. Let's go to this one. D says, oh, excuse me, B says D is 5 plus 6 times 2 divided by 4. So the 5 is by itself. There's nothing to do with it. I'm just going to rewrite it. 5 plus 6 times 2 and the division. We do the multiplication first. We're going left to right. 6 times 2 is 12 divided by 4. So now we have, we're going to do this division before this addition. You can't do 5 plus 12 divided by 4. We have to do 5 plus 12 divided by 4. So we're going to say 5 plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. And 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, let's do this problem C. C to the fourth power. I'm going to write your note this time. C to the fourth power minus d times 2. Okay, 
c to the four c is a two so c to the fourth power is two to the fourth power minus d we're going to put in here a five right d is five to five times two so two to the fourth power you do that first is going to be 16 minus 2 times 5 is 10 and 16 minus 10 is 6 and then over here for problem d we have 40 minus i want to put in the lumber the d is 5 5 squared plus c times d and c times d is 2 times 5 times 3. 40 is by itself. We're going to leave it over here by itself because it comes in front of a subtraction. 40 minus. We have 5 squared. The 5 squared has to come before we do any of this other stuff. That's 25. Plus. Now I can do this. I can say 2 times 5 because I'm going left to right. 2 times 5 is 10 times 3. So now this is multiplied here. These are addition and subtraction. 40 minus 25 plus 30 30 so now i have to do the subtraction before the the addition 40 minus 25 is 15 plus 30 and we do the addition 15 and 30 is 45. okay in example three it's a real world problem they want us to um work with this uh, with these sneakers here so it says, find the cost of the sneakers shown. Use the information, uh, use the formula below. Okay. So what it's saying is the total, co here, total cost of the sneakers is the original price plus the sales tax. And we're going to let R equal the sales tax. We're going to let C equal the total cost. And we're going to let P equal the original price. And here's where we're getting our information from. Here's the sale banner right over here. Sneakers for sale, $59. I'm going to change that to red. $59. And the sales tax is right here, 6%. Okay. So now we're going to say the total cost. See, total cost, I'm going to change it back to blue. Total cost is equal to is, means, basically means equals. C is that blue is the color, you know, kind of an idea. Okay, so we have P, which is the original price, plus the tax. Okay, and plus, so what are we multi? What are we adding? We're adding in the price, so the original price, times the percent, the sales tax percentage. Okay. But that is the percentage, R is the percentage, and divided by 100 gives us the decimal, okay? So in our case, it's going to be 0 0.06, because we're going to take 6 and divide it by 100. So let's look at it. Here's our equation. C is equal to P plus R divided by 100 times P. So we have a little adding and multiplying and dividing going on here, right? That's part of the, what we're learning. So we're going to start off. We're going to say C is equal to 59, over here, the price of the shoes, 59 plus the tax percentage times 59. So we have to do the division. See how the, I put the division in the parentheses? So we have to do the division first. Well, makes sense to do it anyways. So we're going to say, before we do anything with the 59, we're going to say 59 is equal to 0 0.06. 6 divided by 100 is 0 0.06 times 59. So now we've got that far using PEMDAS, right? 59 plus 6 time, 0 0.06 times 59 is 3.54. So now we have 59 plus 3.54, and we get $62.54. That's the price with tax. The key here is, you remember, you take the percentage of the price and add it then to the price. Okay, example three, check your understanding. So you know what that usually means. I'm going to ask you to pause the video. Try it on your own. I'll read it to you. A shirt costs $24.95 plus sales tax. 
of 5%, 5% this time. Find the total cost of the shirt, okay? So I'll give you some time. Why don't you go ahead and give it a try on your own and we'll see how you, how you turn out. We'll work them together. Okay, so here's, the, we've worked it out, right? So again, just like before, total cost right here is, it means equals the original price plus the sales tax. Sales tax gets added to it, but the way we do that is by multiplying here, like in this fashion. C equals P plus the, the tax percentage times the total, the new price, the, the original price. So C is equal to P plus R divided by 100. The tax rate is 5% times 100 times P. And using PEMDAS, so C, the total cost is $24.95 plus 5 divided by 100 to get you 0 0.05 times your 24.95. So 24.95 plus 0 0.05 times 24.95, that equals um, 24.95 plus 1.2475, okay? And then if we go ahead and we round that, that number up, we're gonna end up with 26.20, okay? Because you added in the 24.95, plus the $2, uh, $1.20 20 or 25 cents. Okay, good. Okay, objective two, simplifying and evaluating expressions with grouping symbols. When you simplify expressions with parentheses, work within the parentheses first. Inside the parentheses, use the order of operations. So it says, work within the innermost group first, clearing each set as they are available. Given the following, and look at this high exam <laughs> we've got on here. Hopefully you can read it all and it, it works out. But what I'm trying to show you here is we took this expression, right? This numeric expression right here at the top with all these parentheses in here, multiplying, subtracting, adding, whatever. And I, let's work through it. How do you work through this? So you can move from left to right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the left. And what I here's how I do it. I say, here's an open paren, and this is a closed paren, right? The open paren right here, and a close a closed paren would be like that one. Open parenthesis, closed parenthesis. So given that, I say, look at your open parens and count them, so to, so to speak. So I've got 101, two, three of them here. And then, oh, I get a close on the same one. So that means I've gone as far as I can go with parentheses. I can look inside these and see there are parentheses, but these parentheses are no more than saying that this negative two and the negative one is one unit. But, okay, there's not much you can do there. That's just the way we write that negative to, so you don't get it confused with other symbols within this parentheses. So this says do whatever's inside the red parentheses first. And if you do that, you're going to look right down here and you see negative two times negative one is two. And I left the parenthesis here, right here. I left the parenthesis right there so that you can see the red parentheses converting that to a two. And then you move on. Okay, now that you've got that one, you could do more here, but I want to go across this whole line before I go to the next line. So here, now I got a, a multiplication and I have a, a bracket. It's another grouping symbol. Doesn't matter if it, what it is, but I just chose to use a bracket. So I can count this one. One, two, three, and then I've got these, this two inside of the paren here, because I've got a four minus two right here, red. One, two, three, boom. And you almost don't even have to count them. Just say open, 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 closed. Oh, this must be something for me to work on right now. And when I did that, open, 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 closed right here, I put the two. Four minus two is two. And then you can go the rest of the way and just close, close, close. We're going to go to the next line. I repeated the line. So now I've got open, open, closed. So that means I can do what's inside this parenthesis right here. And when I do that, I'm going to get four divided by two is two. And then I can go to the next, continue on. I can say on this line, I could say two, open, 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 closed. So this orange parenthesis here is going to give you a two plus three is five. Right there, the two plus three is five, right here. 
2 plus 3 is 5. Now go back to the beginning. I copied the line with 6 open, closed. So everything in here, why is it open, closed? Because these parentheses disappeared. Once you get down to there's nothing else to do, you can remove the parentheses. So now it's just 6 times 2 plus 3. So when you do 6 times 2 plus 3, what does PEMDAS say? It says you're going to do the 6 times 2 first and then the 3, right? But I have something to work on over here, so I didn't close these yet. I could have right now worked and done the multiplication, and then down here done this addition. But I'm going to do this at the end. So now I said open, open, close. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Here the blue, 1. So now I got 2 plus 1 because these blues are going to disappear. Go down one line. These carried down. Finally, I got the 6 times 2 plus 3. Open, closed. I can say 6 times 2 is 12 plus 3. And over here in the green, 2 plus 1 is 3. So multiplication now comes in. I got the parentheses are all eliminated. Now I can do the multiplication because these parentheses come before that multiplication. I can get rid of those, those parentheses right here. 15 times 3. Parentheses gone. 12 plus 3 is 15. And the 3 is by itself because the green disappears. Now I can multiply. 15 times 3 is 45. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, example 4. Simplifying an expression with parentheses. Well, we've done that, right? We've been looking at that. So we should be pretty good at this. So it says simplify 15 times 13 minus 7 divided by 8 minus 5. So what is that really saying? It says 15, I, I put blue on these prints and yellow on these so we can kind of distinguish them from up, up top. I just rewrote the original expression here and now I've complete. I've said, well, inside the parentheses, I have to do the parentheses before I do anything else. So I said 13 minus 7 is 6. Right here. 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay. So now I these, I, I go down to the next line, and I've got a multiplication here, which is 15 times 6 is 90. These parentheses have disappeared because there's nothing else to do inside these. So I just have the 3. So what do I do? I say 90 divided by 3, because now these parentheses are all gone. I can do the division. 90 divided by 3 is 30. Okay, example 4. Check your understanding. Simplify each expression. You know what you're going to do. You're going to stop the video, hopefully, and then come back and we'll do them together after you've tried them. But I'll read them. The quantity 5 plus 3 divided by 2 plus the quantity... 5 squared minus 3. Okay. And B is 8 divided by the quantity. When I say the quantity, that means that's a parenthesis surrounding that quantity, right? 8 divided by the quantity 9 minus 7 plus the quantity 13 divided by 2. The quantity is kind of implying a whole unit, and those grouping brackets imply an entire unit. So you have to take that unit as one. You can't separate it and work on it in different pieces. So go ahead and stop. When you come back, we'll do them together. Okay, now that you're back, let's give it a try. What do we have? So we have, um, instead of, re I can just rewrite this from the beginning. So this addition comes within this parentheses. So I can do that addition right now before anything else. Because I have these parentheses here. That's other things I'm going to do, but this, we'll see what I do with the square. But So I have 5 plus 3 is 8, and I don't need the parenthesis anymore because I'm done. There's nothing left to parenthesize, parenthesize. <laughs> What's the word? Anyways, divided by 2 plus, I'm going to put the parentheses back in, 5 squared is 25 minus 3. Okay, I left that. Because now I did this. Now I'm going to come back and solve inside the parentheses continued. 8 divided by 2 plus 25 minus 3 is 22. So now I have 8 divided by 2 plus 22. 8, and you do the divide before the adds, right? So 8 divided by 2 is 4 plus 
22, and that's going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 26. 26. How about this one? B, 8 divided by 9 minus 7 is 2, plus the quantity 13 divided by 2, right? I can do that because it's a parenthesis. There's only one level of parentheses. So now I have this level. 13 divided by 2 is equal to 10. Oh, no, it's not. I don't know where my head's going. 13 divided by 2 is 6 and a half. Is 6.5. So now I have 8 divided by 2 plus 6.5. So what? I have to do the division before I can do the addition. So that means I'm going to do this before adding. So 8 divided by 2 is 4 plus 6.5. And then that equals 10.5. So example 5, let's evaluate expressions with exponents, right? Evaluate the expression for c equal 15 and d equal 12. So the quantity c times d squared and b is cd squared, right? There's a difference. So what is the difference? So in the first one, we have the quantity c times d squared means you take substitute c and d for 15 times 12. That's c times d, 15 times 12. And that's your quantity, and you square it. So 15 times 12 is 180, and 180 squared is 32,400. Uh, 32, now the difference is, over here the, there's no parentheses. So what do you do? It's c times d squared. So here you have 15 times 12 squared, because you have the, the exponent goes only with the immediate front variable or number or whatever it is. Okay, since so this is multiplication, exponentiation comes before multiplication. Remember PEMDAS. Okay, now if there were a parenthesis here, then you would do the, the, the square root would be times the, the whole parenthesis area, right? The, the, the quantity, c times d. In this case, it's 15 times 12 squared, which is 15 times 144, which is 2,160, 2,160. So remember that. When you have this parenthesis here like this, the parenthesis right here, then the, everything inside that gets squared. But if there's no parenthesis, only the first, the character touching it in this case gets squared. The C doesn't get squared in this case. Okay, example five, check your understanding. So hopefully you'll stop the video and try these yourself. I'll read them to you. It says evaluate the expression for r equal 9 and t equal to 14. So the first problem is rt squared. The second was r squared t. Then the quantity rt squared. Okay, give them a shot. Go ahead and pause the video. And when you come back, we'll look at it. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've had time to do that and you're, you're back. So let's go ahead and do them together. So we're going to substitute in here. The R is going to be a 9 and for T, we're going to put in a 14, right? So the first one is R times T squared. So that is really 9 times 14 squared. I, you saw I wrote it, the multiplication and the squaring, two separate things. And 9 times 196, and that comes out to 1764. Okay, for b, r squared t, well, that's 9 squared time, uh, times 14. Well, 9 squared is 81 times 14. And 81 times 14 is 1134. And how about this one here? We have rt, the quantity, squared. Well, in this case, we have 9 times 14 squared. 9 times 14 squared is 126 squared. 126 squared is 15,879. Example six, simplifying an expression. 
you can use brackets as grouping symbols. And I did that before uh, in, uh, in Objective 2, you saw me use a bracket. When expressions have several grouping symbols, and that one I gave you a lot of them, didn't I? Simplify the innermost expression first. So simplify to bracket, open bracket, open parenthesis, 13 minus 7, close parenthesis, squared, plus 3, close bracket. So how are we going to do that? So I've rewritten it. Right here, right here, I rewrote the system, rewrote it. And we're going we're gonna to do some, not substitution, but we're going to complete this expression, OK? So two times all of this. So the first thing I did is I went inside the set. I remember what I told you to do. I says bracket, parenthesis, one, open, open, close. As soon as you find the close, you can go back and do everything inside that group. Well, open, open, close, we made this a 6. 13 minus 7 is a 6. So I put a 6 inside this parenthesis. I left the parentheses there. You could remove them because now that the 6, there's nothing you can do inside other than you have a 6. You can reduce, remove this, the parentheses. I left them there so that you could see that I'm working on the same thing. 7, 13 minus 7 is 6. So now it's open, open, closed. Otherwise, it would have just been open, closed. So I would take the square. 6 squared is 36 divided by 3. Everything inside the brackets would be done right now, 2 times. So when you do that, you have 2 times 36 divided by 3 is 12. 2 times 12 is 24. OK, example 6, check your understanding. So you know what to do. Pause the video and try them on your own first. I'll read them, simplify each expression, 5 times the quantity, uh, and that's with the brackets, 4 plus 3 times the quantity, 2 squared plus 1, close, close, right? You see it? And then we have 12 right here. We have 12 plus 3 times this the bigger quantity, right? The brackets, 18 minus 5 times the inner quantity, 16 minus 13. And then down here we have 5 plus the larger quantity, the brackets, 2 plus 1 cubed minus 3. So go ahead and try it your own. And when you come back, we'll do them. Hopefully, we can get them done together. OK, so I'm going to work them with you by hand here instead of having typed them out. So, the, so what can we do here? We can write 5 times the, remember I said you go through first. So it's open, open, closed. So we're going to work on this one right here. So I'm going to say 5 bracket 4 plus 3 times, 3 times this brace, 2 squared plus, I'm going to get rid of that 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1. close bracket. So now I got rid of the square. There's still parentheses though. So now I'm going to write 5 open 4 plus 3 bracket 4 plus 1 is 5 parenthesis bracket. So now we're going to be getting this. We're going to multiply these, right? Watch this. Now what's going to we, we're going to deal with this multiplication here. So 5 because I've got it could be 5 times this whole quantity. So 5 times 4, 4 plus 3 times 5 is 15. You had to do the multiplication. No more brags. No parentheses are gone. Now it's 5 times what? The bracket 4 plus 15 is 19. And that answer should then be what? It should be 550 and 9 times 45 is 95. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and work on the next one here. So now we're going to have 12 plus. I'm just going to write the 12 plus because I know it's going to happen. Because there's too much to do before we get involved with the 12. 12 plus 3 
we have a bracket, I open, I open, and a close. So it's going to be an open 18 minus 5, open, open, 16 minus 13. I'm going to do it right now. 3 bracket. I got rid of that. Right now, that print is going to be multiplied away by this 3 times 5. So now I have 12 plus 3, open. 18 minus 15, right? 15, close bracket. 12 plus 3, open. 18 minus 15 is 3. 12 plus 3 times 3 is 9. 12 plus 9 is 21. 21. Okay, so now let's take a look and see if we've got the uh, 5 plus, okay, 5, 5, we've got brackets over here, so 5 plus, open, open, 2 plus 1, close, right? So 2 plus 1 is 3, close, cubed. I can do what's inside the bracket before I do the cube. Minus 3, close. Now I'm going to go again. 5 plus open. Now I have these parentheses can just disappear because there's nothing in them that needs being worked on. There's only a single number. So now that's 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. 27 minus 3. Close it. 5 plus 27 minus 3 is 24. Okay, now we have 5 plus 24 is 29. Okay, those all good? Good. Okay, so on example 7, we're going to look at a real world problem here. A neighborhood association turned a vacant lot into a park. The park is shaped like the trapezoid shown here. Use the formula A equals H times the quantity B1 plus B2 over 2 to find the area of the lot. H is the height. B1 and B2 are the bases, as we call them. And they've showed it in the diagram. The H is 130 feet, and B1 is 100 feet, and B2 is 200. So the two parallel lines that are opposite each other, those are the bases. And then the height, you see that. That's the perpendicular line to them. Oh, got it? So now I rewrote the formula A equals H times the quantity B1 plus B2 over 2. Then we go ahead and we substitute. We substitute in the um, 130 for the H and 100 and 200 for the B1 and B2 to be divided by 2. Then we take 130 times 300 right here, 300 divided by 2, which is 150. 130 times 150 is 19,500. There's our answer, 19,500 square feet. Okay. Okay, example seven, check your understanding. So um, the directions, find the area of the trapezoid with the height of H equal 300. And the bases, B1 is 250 and B2 is 170. Using the same formula used in the last um, in the last slide. So go ahead and give it a try. When you come back, we'll work them together, okay? Okay, now that you're back, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Directions. Find the area of a trapezoid with the height H is 300. Base 1 is 250. Base 2 is 170. Here's the formula. You know the formula right here. We got the formula. We're going to substitute in. The height is 300. The base 1 and base 2 are 250 and 170, respectively, divided by 2. So 300 divided by 150 plus 170 is 420. Divided by 2 is 210. 300 times 210 is 63,000. So the area of the park is 63,000 feet squared. Right? You just add the two bases. 250 and 170 and divided by 2, 420 divided by 2, 300 times 210, and that gives you your answer.